Yeah, this is Yazid from my second wife. She's from, from Yemen. And this is Muawiyah from my first wife. And this is Sophia from and my first my wife. We've got three wives, one husband, 11 kids. We are a family. Men with many wives. An increasingly common sight in Britain today. We call it instant children. When you are in polygamy, the second, third, and fourth wife will have instant children. I enjoy polygamy because I have my um, the days that I have to myself and to my children. So when my husband told me about polygamy from the outset, I thought, yeah, I can trust this guy. And that's what made me want to marry him more. But a polygamous life is never simple. Out of 10 years, I could honestly say, being very generous, I've probably had six months of time with me and him. Especially with a wife in another country. It should just be seen as what it is. Mm -hmm. It's an allowable choice for yeah. us. From an office in East London, Mizan Raja runs a Muslim marriage bureau. So you prefer a sister without child, okay, that's a, that's a preference, okay. With over 50,000 clients on his books, it's one of the UK's largest. Now, I do have a particular sister, um, if you're interested. I just want to know what your situation would be. How old are you? 27, that's perfect age, same age, same age as her. But the only problem is she's got a kid. In recent years, Mizan has been getting an increasing number of calls from British Muslims who are looking to get into polygamous marriages. There are a lot of guys out there who are very well established, very successful men who are um, who can handle two, three wives easily, not a problem. Because they've got high libido rates, they sincerely want more children. Um, you know, um, why not? Polygamy is illegal under British law but permitted for Muslims under Sharia law. While far from the norm, some estimate as many as 20,000 such marriages exist in Britain today. Uh, Brick the Masjid. Hassan Phillips has two wives. He's 32 and works part-time at a Brixton mosque. He converted to Islam when he was 16. A lot of people, you know, when they find out that, oh, Hassan, you've got more than one wife, like, that must have been your game plan from the beginning, you know? Jamaicans, they love women, apparently. Not something you come into Islam thinking about marriage, especially when you've come from a Christian background where, you know, you've, it's just girlfriends, you know? And polygamy, <laughs> that was not, that was the last thing on my mind. I, in fact, I used to be scared of it. In most Muslim polygamous marriages, the wives live in separate houses with their own children. Tonight, Hassan is on his way to stay with his wife Nabila in North London. <laughs> Nabila came from Malaysia to do a PhD in engineering at Cambridge. She met Hassan through a Muslim matrimonial website and gave up her studies to marry him and have his children Safian and Saleh. I was looking for somebody who's been married or who's already in a marriage. Um, so, because I was um, married before that, and I, um, having gone through one divorce, you kind of know what you wanted in marriage. So, um, so I wanted somebody who already knows how to be a husband. That means that um, somebody who's already a husband <laughs> is a good candidate. Right. Yeah. I don't really support brothers who have this mentality, no, she's got to be pure, unchaste, never been touched, she's never seen daylight, blah, blah, blah. and then he's, you know, been around the block. And you think, well, come on, bruv. Why is she? Why is she? When Nabila and Hassan married, she became the second wife, a co-wife in his polygamous marriage. I met um, oh, with my oh, co-wife oh, oh. before marriage and we had tea and all that and so um, so she was okay with that so alhamdulillah um, and after marriage um, our relationship 
starts developing slowly and slowly. <laughs> I really enjoyed um, being in a polygamy relationship. Um, if people can see, you know, what the greater benefit is, um, it's not. We are not. We are not stupid who are forced to be in this kind of relationship. <laughs> Are you going to move that to the top? Or you want it to be on the top? I want it to be somewhere that... Prominent. Nabila works from home, designing and running the website for the family's business, selling Arabic perfumes and clothing. I've got some bits and pieces. This is some, uh, some of our orders. No, it's, it's a small family business, but it works. We're not, you know, benefit-based. We, we, we have our own business and we, we, we live off whatever comes from our business. In line with Islamic custom, Nabila keeps all her earnings in addition to money given to her by Hassan. I do like, you know, doing this this kind of work. Um, it does give me flexibility that like staying home with my children. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's different, um, but it's good. Yeah, it keeps it keeps my brain active. I think. I'm not going back into the academic life. <laughs> the following day, after work at the mosque, Hassan makes his way to the South London home of his other wife, Sakina. One of the conditions of polygamy is that you have to be fair and just between your wives, not equal, necessarily. If I buy her two roses, I don't have to go and buy her two roses as well. This is not, you know, what is uh, how it's meant to be understood. The only thing that you have to be strictly equal in is the time that you spend with your wives. Each wife gets a san for three nights at a time. Sakina works full time in the city. She's working late, so her san collects their two children, Khalil and Zakaria from nursery. Okay. How was school? Hassan was already married and divorced when he met Sakina at university. She is the first wife in his polygamous marriage. If you ask me to cook, I cook for myself, but if I try to cook for other people, they're going to leave with an upset stomach. <laughs> now, I'm not that bad a cook. The secret is, I'll tell you what, this is the secret. Don't let your wife know how good a cook you are, because once you do that, you're going to be the victim of your own success. You're going to end up having to cook all the time when she realises how good you really are. It's, it's wonderful being a father. I really enjoy it. I love it. It's like, you know, I can't get enough of being a father. Two, give me five. Good job. Marsh. I had um, a close relationship with my father, and then due to circumstances, that relationship, you know, um, severely broke down. So I kind of like know what it's like to not have that. Being raised in a single parent home made me realise how important it is to have both parents. You know, you think to yourself, I'm not going to do it like this when it's my turn. When I become the parent, I'm going to do it, you know, the way that I think it's going to be better because I experienced it this way and I didn't enjoy it. You're going to get married? You're going to have, how many wives are you going to have? One, two, three or four? Four. Four. Mizan from the Marriage Bureau is on his way to meet two new clients wanting a polygamous marriage. We've got an oversupply. Uh, yeah, I don't like using the word. We've got a massive oversupply of women in their 30s, 40s, divorced, humongous. I mean, I can literally, on, on our service, we've got something nearly up to 15,000 to 20,000 women who are um, in that category, divorced, with children, um, and who are looking and um, finding it very difficult. Um, a lot of, majority of them want a monogamous relationship, but more and more and more are now considering uh, becoming co-wives. And, and it's driven by the women, not by the men. 
Polygamy was practiced in Arabia before Islam, but with no restrictions on the number of wives. Islam limited it to four. When a man marries more than one wife, it is known as polygyny. Mizans come to Derby to meet a married couple looking for a second wife to join them in a polygamous marriage. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Omar, welcome, welcome. Long, long, long time no see. Yeah, yeah. Good to meet you. You too, you too. Yeah. And this is your wife? My wife, yeah. MashaAllah. Good, good. How have you been? Omar met his wife, Umm Zakaria, on an Islamic course in Leicester. He's 39 and has had a well-paid career as a physicist. They've been in a polygamous marriage before, but it broke down and ended in divorce. What's the main reason you want to you go, you want to look for a second wife? There's, there's no reason other than yeah. that if someone, if, someone, some, yeah. Yeah, if, somebody, if somebody reads uh, one of the books from God, whether we're talking about the Bible yeah. or the Quran, yeah. Yeah, it's cl perfectly clear in there that yeah. this is what is allowed. Okay. And it's always been allowed. Like you read the Bible, it's allowed. You go to Africa and you see yeah. many Christians there practicing polygyny. Practicing. But, but actually, people in the UK seem to think that it's a, a Muslim mm -hmm. issue. But really, it's, it's a matter of religion. Yeah. It was actually Islam that came before it was unrestricted polygyny. It was actually Islam that came down and restricted it to four. So you mm -hmm. don't think, like many people when they hear about polygyny in Islam, they think, oh brilliant, that's a license to go and party and yeah. you know have a collection of wives. But yeah. actually, in reality, when, when the command came down, a lot yeah. of men had to actually divorce many wives. And a lot of people think, well, why are you happy about it? Because the man gets to have a wife and whatever, what do you get out of it? Yeah. But for me, it's nothing to do with helping out or anything, because I don't need any help. I don't need anything. Yeah. I, I'm happy I'm the way we are. Happy. Yeah. But the main thing is, I want to revive something that's dying out. And it's amazing, because so many brothers be like, oh, mashallah, Omar, we love you. You're, yeah. you're our brother. But then when it comes down to, can you help me find a wife? If you've got a, a daughter or a niece or a, an difficult. auntie or a granny somewhere that yeah. I can marry, yeah, all of a sudden it's like, um, they had a real difficulty finding yeah. just somebody that was a suitable match. Yeah. Well, what I would say is, yeah. I want to follow Islam. That's my opinion. Yeah. And if they've got a problem with that, but they call themselves a Muslim, yeah. they've got a contradiction within themselves. <laughs> they all come with their own personalities, man. You know, they all come with their own personalities and to find someone, a personality that will meet their criterion is very difficult. Unusually, Omar and Umm Zakaria would like a second wife to live with them and their son, rather than living in a separate house. There's nothing lacking in our marriage. It's just, um, if it can work, it's a, it's a bonus, it's an extra. But, I mean, you know, there's nothing lacking. So when my husband told me about polygyny from the outset, I thought, yeah, I can trust this guy. And that's what made me want to marry him more. I know it might sound stupid, you know, if you think, oh, he wants polygyny, but actually that's, that's the bit that got me more interested because I thought, you know what, if this guy can admit it from the beginning, then I, I've got nothing to worry about. There's so many women out there who are wondering where their husbands are after night, you know, after dark, thinking, is he going with another woman? What's he doing? You know, all that stuff. I have no issue with somebody telling me, right, I want polygyny or I'm already married or whatever else. Hassan already has two wives, but has decided to marry a third, a woman he met through a friend. How you doing? You okay? How you doing? You're fine, man. That's good. Yeah, no, no. That's family good. Good, good, good. MashaAllah. He, um... I'm getting married this week, innit? Allahu <laughs> Akbar, mashallah. Fourth one? No, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Number three, inshallah. Number so, three, yeah. yeah okay, so mashallah. You're invited, inshallah. It's going to be in Brixton. Achha, Friday after Maghrib, if you can make it. Alhamdulillah. Good news, inshallah. good news. Yeah, mashallah. Yeah. Very good, very good to hear. So I'm just trying to this is the man. Allah reward you, may Allah make it easy for you. May Allah give you better, inshallah. I mean, I mean, I mean. Inshallah. Hassan's wife to be is of Somali origin and is almost 10 years older than him. As her husband, he will pay her a dowry and give her gifts. There we go, look, we found a winner. That's nice, I like that. She works as a driving instructor and, like most Muslim women in Britain, doesn't currently wear a face veil. This is the new uh -huh. This is for eyes as well. This is for eyes as well. Uh -huh. This is normal makeup and this is for eyes. Okay. This is the new one. Okay. She's in her, her, her 40s. But it was deliberate. I, I wanted a mature woman because I, I appreciate the maturity. I appreciate a mature woman. And, I, you know, 
just uh, from experience, I think you know that's what I need. You know, I'm, I'm looking for companionship. <laughs> Hassan and his new wife have decided to keep the wedding very simple. How much is ten chicken? How many people can eat? Ten chicken. Uh, That's how you cut it. Seven or eight of these chickens here, and then obviously he's going to cut them all up for me, and then uh, with some bread, and I'll bring some dates and some sweets and some drinks. Fifty pounds, done and dusted. The other wives going to come? No, no, no. I don't, I don't think it'd be right to invite them, you know. Even though they're accepting of polygamy, you don't want to really rub it in their faces that I'm getting married and expect them to be happy and have a party about it. It's just something, you know, alhamdulillah, you're doing it not for them, you're doing it, you know, for, for, for the greater benefit of yourself and the person you're marrying. I've consulted them, I've spoke to them, they're aware of it, they're on board, they're supportive. You know, they don't need to be there at the table eating with me as well. <laughs> Hassan's new wife, Anab, is divorced with a teenage son, and as her only male relative, Hassan had to ask for his permission to marry his mother. Marriage covers a whole spectrum of things, and amongst them is your responsibility to your, your, your Muslim sisters, who have been married and divorced, who are you know, widows, who have children, who, for whatever reason, their marriages didn't work out, or whatever the case might be, they still need to be married, and they're still good women, and they still have great qualities and, and you know, aspects of them that please any man. It's not that it's a newspaper, you scrunch it up and throw it away. Uh, you know, she, she's a human being, she's a woman, she's got needs just like a man's got needs. And sometimes you'll find all what you're looking for in a woman that's already been married. So then what do you say? No, because she's been married before? That's discrimination. And if you look at the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, how he was in his marriages, out of all of the marriages that he had, only one was virgin. Hassan will have a simple Islamic marriage with only two witnesses and the Iman present. By the time I get back, inshallah, they'll be happily married. I already am happily married, but inshallah, there'll be an addition to the family. The private ceremony takes place behind closed doors. MashaAllah, well done, mate. Well done, mate. Just look like a bit of a MashaAllah, may Allah bless you in the marriage. I mean, may Allah give you better, inshaAllah. I mean, Alhamdulillah. And you too, Aki, may Allah give you even better, inshaAllah. Are you going to invite me, yeah? Inshallah. How did it go? It went great, Alhamdulillah. It was very good, quite smooth, you know, as mentioned, MashaAllah. A lot of nice points brought up in the khutbah. So, um, yeah, it was good. The men and women celebrate separately, and Hassan spends his wedding night with one of his other wives. And the reason why he doesn't want to divorce his first wife is because he's a nice guy. He doesn't want to create, create difficulties at the same time. Mizan takes a call from a woman wanting to become a co-wife in a polygamous marriage. He made it quite clear to me he can actually give another house, another, you know, you know, so, you know, you can do whatever you want, basically. So immediately she felt reassured um, that this guy has security. And that does establish one thing. Women, any woman, uh, single or divorced, they want, they're looking for security. Men from Mars, women from Venus. That always comes up. And it comes up more in polygamous marriages. I find that more in polygamous, because men, uh, are, are, are more driven to polygamy, even though there are some who look, they will really sincerely want to help, but those are few. Most men who actually do want to do polygamy, um, most when I mean are probably 80%, uh, is, is a sexually driven thing. Guys, number one, they look for one thing. It's, you know, it's the body. The body has to be, I, I just don't understand, the body has to be, uh, good, in good proportions. That's the number one request for men. It's a week after Hassan's marriage to Anab, the third wife in his polygamous marriage. After a three-day honeymoon in Birmingham, Hassan spends his first three nights with Anab 
at her home in northwest London. Since marriage, Anap has started wearing the niqab, the face veil. Sorry, come. My wonderful wife, inshallah, may Allah bless her. Before you met um, Brother Hassan, was, was polygamy something you'd ever thought about? You would see Yeah. Right. Before, I think it was very hard to get married, be second wife or something. But after they met a lot of sisters, honestly, the marriage had a lot of problems. So, so I decided Brother has a wife, <laughs> maybe more responsible than when I hasn't got any. So if she had said no to me about the niqab, it would have been an issue only for, you know, for, for a number of reasons. Why? Because my other two wives wear niqab, yeah? And um, they didn't used to before I married them. I feel like, you know, she's something covered and protected for me. <laughs> you know, some people, they cover their cars, don't they? They put these sheets over their car. You know, they cover their valuables. You know, they keep it away from, you know, people seeing and wanting and desiring things that they have. And um, in a similar way, you know, your wife or my wife being covered, it, it, it's, a, it's a protection for me. I have to remember that he has got family before me. So do you miss him when he goes away? Of course, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I miss him. That's nice. Yeah. In an East London park, Hassan is getting all his families together. Although they live in separate houses, Hassan likes them all to meet up. Two older children from his very first marriage also join them. Okay, so I'm not really for this uh, everyone in the same house, you know. Ideally, maybe it sounds great, but it, it's a bit too much pressure. Sparks might fly over anything. Whose turn is it to cook? You don't really want that. You try to limit as much conflict as you can. It's all about conflict limitation. It's the first time his wives, Sakina and Nabila, will meet his new third wife, Anab. Uh -huh. Do you have any advice for her about uh, brother husband? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, this <is> good. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, <I> don't know. <laughs> He's grumpy in the mornings, yeah. he snores at night, and all the rest, who knows what else. It's not complicated. I can't get my Khadija, Saleh, Nabila, this is uh, Sister Anab. Mashallah, Tabarakallah. You want to play some football, Khalid? You want to play football? Yeah. You can't just really relax. You have to kind of be very careful. You know, don't joke too much with her without joking with her. If she doesn't understand the joke, she might take it negatively and think it's about her. You know, don't over show your emotion to one of them. You know, this is the time when you really just have to be very strict. And very, so you can't really, you know, come and relax and then, you know, cuddle one of your wives and then your other wife sitting there thinking, who knows what? I think they've got some stories to tell you. Like, I think they've got so much to tell you. They think that I haven't told you about the true me, or I haven't represented myself properly. Are they wait till she finds out what you're like? Or I don't know what they want to tell you. <laughs> but yeah, you'll find out. You'll find out. I got nothing to hide. Everything, everything that I've said, everything that I've told you, is what they're going to tell you. You know, they, you have those people and they have the stick with the plate on it and they go like that mm -hmm. and it spins and then they get another one and it spins and they get another one and it spins and then you gotta go that one and make sure it keeps spinning and then you get me it's like keeping all of these plates spinning <laughs> you cannot let one topple or fall off i'll get there <laughs> a common challenge for the men with many wives is keeping all their families happy this is Bingrip area, where the, most of the Muslims live here. In Sheffield, Mohammed El Gene has been polygamous for over 15 years, with three wives and 11 children. He's worked in restaurants all his life, but now, at 43, 
He's been unemployed for two years and is struggling to find work. Some wings, please. Wings? Yeah. yeah. With skin, without skin? No, with skin. That one. Skin, yeah. yeah. We're going to make some tagine. Huh? <laughs> no, we put it in the. Oh, great. No, in the pan. In the pan, yeah. Back in the house, yeah, you remember? Yeah, yeah. 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 that is very good. Yeah. Okay. If the man you want to get married again. Ah, uh, okay. So he said, Is there any other sister available, second one or third one? He's a brave man. No but yeah. this brother, maybe he said, Yeah, he wants to, no, no. but he's a bit. One is enough, one is enough. Is enough, yeah? Two Why is, is that? One is enough, two is a problem, three is most <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, what are we going to do? Mashi. Yalla, salam alaikum, shabab. Like Hassan, his wives also live in separate houses. Well, back home now. <laughs> Amal is from Yemen and is Mohammed's second wife. They've been married 13 years and have four children. That's Nabil Apples. Nabil eating. That's Bilkis, she lost a tooth. Can we have a smile then? Oh, there's a gap there. What did she like about Brother Mohammed? Um, Not now. There, there. <laughs> uh, when I see him first time, I think this uh, man, why live in the world, I mean, the man. Oh! <laughs> so. She's telling me now new stories. I, I never knew that. Uh -huh. She said, uh, when she looked at me and keep looking and looking, she felt that's the man she was waiting for for a long time ago. It was in her mind. A short walk away is Hannah's home, Mohammed's first wife. She's English and met Mohammed 20 years ago when he was working in a restaurant in Spain. They also have four children. <laughs> and this is Muawiya from my first wife. And this is Sufiyan from my first my wife. And, and this is Jude, my next friend. door neighbor. Yes. And that's Zubay. From my second wife, those two are brothers and those two are brothers. The rest is in the house. Come inside, so Come on. that's the next door neighbor. Take you, take you. It's all right, it's all right. It's only a few, few seconds, a few minutes. Wait to the camera. Are you going to ask Jude something? Uh, Jude, so you've been always scared to ask, have you? Uh, well, not really. I just always thought about it being weird. You always thought unusual. it was weird? Yeah, unusual. just unusual. People long time ago thinking like people who have got more than one wife is because they like women. I don't have that mentality. No. To me is having more than one wife is sharing a marriage wife with another person. Like you're making another house. To man to open another house is a big matter. Mohammed's third and most recent wife lives thousands of miles away in Morocco, where he originally came from. At 26, Thuraya is his youngest wife and mother to three of his children. It's been seven months since she last saw him. Did he ask you that he, or tell you rather that he was going to um, marry a third yeah. wife? And how did you feel about that? Um, I felt jealous. I felt a bit jealous. Um, he talked to me. Because she is a second wife, she has to take it in another perspective. She said, okay, he is allowed to have three or four wives, so she has to put herself that if it's going to happen. She has to accept it as well. Oh, delicious. Sometimes when it comes to the feeling, they're not going to show you what they feel inside. But of course, I am a man who knows the feeling of a woman. That's why I didn't show it to her in a way. Oh, it's a big issue. No, I'm trying to make it. It's a very small issue. And the time will show it. It's fine. Sometimes I do realize they wish I'm a man just for her. 
no the other. Is that true, sister? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see? In the Morocco, one time she told me, she said, oh, I'm very happy with you, but it's a shame. I have to share you with another or two wives, but this is Islam. And I was laughing. She said, why are you laughing? I said, you're not the only one who's saying this. <laughs> Do you want to go to the park to play a little bit? Yeah, OK. Yes. OK. Mohammed encourages his children to play together and see themselves as belonging to one large family. We've got three wives, one husband, 11 kids. We are a family. I teach my kids, like, for example, this is your mother. That's my second wife. The children who are with her is your brothers and sisters. Are you guys quite similar, or are you different? Similar. similar. Really? Yeah. All of you? All three of you? Yeah. How are you similar? Um, we have the, second, the same second name. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Their mum doesn't... Do, she, she never lets Nabila sleep here. Because every time I come back when I get cold. She's, and then she, she, she eats like two plates of dinner and then she comes home and says, no, I'm, I'm hungry, and then... <laughs> I'm hungry. And then she tells her mum that she didn't eat anything. So that's why her mum thinks that she shouldn't come here anymore. I want my kids just to say, I want to visit my brother and sister. In fact, I wish they could live in one road, one house next to another. we would be more happy with that. But some women, they don't think like that. My dad and my stepmother fall out sometimes. Then it's hard for me to like, and I see my brothers. It's, it's really difficult when someone falls out in the family because it's, it's really like a big deal. It's like by himself, you guys. Sophia, you score, you chance to score. Yes! <laughs> She is! Would you like to have more than one wife? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't really want to at the moment. It's like, I'd, I'm just... Because it's like, it's hard, obviously, providing for a large, large family. Because there's a lot more of you and there's less to go around. Every weekend, Mohammed tries to get his children together for a day out. But as Mohammed and his wives are unemployed and dependent on benefits, days like these are rare. The difficulty of balancing many families on little money is a source of tension, a tension exacerbated by his desire to share the state benefits they receive with his wife and children in Morocco. My own experience, the difficulties is is the money wise. Money plays a lot, a big role in, 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 in supporting three wives and the kids. But sometimes I think if you have uh, the idea clear that you live as a family, even if you live in different places, yeah, you do need to share all that amount of money what everybody gets because it's one family. And as soon if your wife start thinking independently, then the idea of one family, that will uh, compromise a little bit the situation and put pressure on the husband more than anything else. <laughs> for you? Not for all of us. Yeah. For his relationship with his wife Hannah is really suffering, and this is why she's chosen not to appear. Mohammed keeps in near daily contact with his third wife in Morocco. I just rang her and uh, I feel this uh, last week ringing them and uh, they really miss me the kids and uh, my wife and they keep saying, Baba, leave everything and come and see us. It's been nearly seven months we didn't see you. And I said, you know, because I don't have enough money to, to go and travel. And, but I'm thinking uh, to borrow some money and then do the trip, even if it's for a short time. 
A shortage of money and the demands of maintaining three families has placed the tensions between Mohammed and his two wives in England at breaking point. One of my kids from the first house wants to visit the second house, and she said, no, I don't want him to come. And I said, no. He wants to come, he's welcome. If you start going with me, no, this is my house, I am the one who uh, gave the decision. And I said, no. If my son wants to come to see me and see his brother, so he has to come. She said, no, yeah, no. I said, I said, okay, look, I'm going to let him in. She said, okay. He's not welcome if you carry on talking with me like this, so you might leave as well. Mohammed's two polygamous marriages in England are under strain, and for the past few weeks he's been sleeping on the sofas at his wife's houses. Do you think you're a good husband? I think so, yeah. I think so. Because to be a good husband, it doesn't mean you obey your wife all the time. No. You obey your wife as long as you see yourself not taking anything from you as a man. There are no certain figures for Islamic marriage breakdown and divorce. For some women, family pressure and the fear of isolation after divorce probably helps keep numbers down. Bradford, Yorkshire, home to Shaheen Qureshi. She had an arranged marriage to her first cousin from Pakistan when she was 16. It failed and ended in divorce 10 years ago. Soon after, she met her present husband and agreed to become his second wife in a polygamous marriage. She has eight children, two with him. Good girl, yeah, we made it. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. It has been weeks since she last saw her husband, who lives nearby with his first wife. It's a, a bit difficult at the moment. We're not really on speaking terms. That's not because of me, that's because, I don't know, he's not well. But actions do speak louder than words. Um, so I'd like to know where I stand, basically, because this is my life and I've not a lot of it left. For my mum, being a co-wife is very hard, especially when the, uh, when the husband doesn't support her as well in any way he could. So technically it's very hard for my mum, but most of the times um, we do feel uncomfortable about it. It's never been that he's not speaking to me. That's a bit strange, that's not like him. And I don't know what's going through his head, uh, what's the purpose of him staying quiet. I don't think that's very fun, being co-wife. Especially when, when you've got, uh, when you find out you've got that um, your husband's got another uh, wife. When I'm at home and I look out my kitchen window, as far as left as I can look and as far as right I can look, and ahead of me, everybody's husbands come home at the end of the day or in the morning after a night shift, and I seem to be the only single parent on my street. So for me, I just feel like you know, this so many years on, still being on my own, it's it's really heartbreaking. You know the drill, when you get back home, uniforms off, interior of the clothes, and straight to mosque, yeah? Yeah, Mum just dropped me straight to school because uh, I stay for the... I need your uh, laptop yeah. for coffee. After weeks of trying, Shaheen finally manages to talk to her husband about the state of their marriage. I just said that I'd take the blame for everything. Just to save the marriage, I'll take the blame for everything. I apologised, said, fine, everything's my fault. Got two daughters here, need to look at that. And uh, he wasn't having any of it. And I said, do you want me to end it? And he says, end it. Shaheen's decided to apply for a divorce. As her Islamic marriage is not recognised under British law, she's applying to a Sharia court. The process will take several months and involve attempts at conciliation. Out of 10 years, I could honestly say, being very generous, I've probably had six months of time with me and him in 10 years. And I knew that in a polygamous marriage, I wouldn't have somebody there seven days a week, but I was happy with two, even maybe one if it came down to it, just to keep the marriage going until things changed, because year in, year out, things can change. 
So I'm quite compromised with it. I can compromise in that way, but this is not, this is not a marriage. After months of searching, Umar still has only one wife. If anybody's tried, tried looking for a wife, they'll, they'll, they'll realise you're not going to find a wife when you're looking for it. It's going it's to happen, like you're going to meet a lady in a supermarket, or it's, it's going to be when you least expect it, when you're least prepared for it. That's the time you can expect Cupid to strike. It's Wednesday night, and Hassan is on his way to one of his wives. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder, isn't it? And part of that is probably true because that period, that short period of being away, it makes, it builds our, you know, you do miss your wife, you just can't help it, you miss them. There was nothing you couldn't do. You know, if, if anything ever broke or was not working or something, it's like he had magic hands. And I felt so calm around him and, and stress-free and I felt safe. I felt safe and I felt like I was home, if that makes sense. Not home as in a building, but somewhere where I belonged. Yeah, that's really hard. There are a lot of good memories. Uh, it's hard to let go. It feels like somebody's trying to rip us apart and I feel like part of me is, is being ripped away from me. And, it, and I don't want it to end, but my head says, you have to end it, and my heart says no. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big war going on between my head and my heart. I climbed all those mountains a long time ago. Ooh, I can smell it already. <laughs> Mohammed has returned to Morocco after a nine-month absence. And this is uh, Zainab. This is my uh, third one. Mashallah, <laughs> <laughs> Where I feel home in all houses is here with the Moroccan wife. It's because of the traditional way of life, how we live. So it's, it's closer than... Uh... Thank you. Shukran. Do you think you will ever take on a fourth wife? Mm. Thanks. My wife doesn't know English. <laughs> she might... <laughs> أني قال لي واش كظن شي نهار غتزوج المرا الرابعه قلت له مزيان المرا المرا ما كتعرفش الانجليزي ماي وايف سيد او ذيس از وات وي نيد ناو جاست ذا فورث وان 